when I was still in Katal, I sent uh, someone um, some money to buy me a land. But when they were about to now to they were about now to put the roof, I was told that house was not built properly. My house was demolished. I spent a lot of money yeah. to build this house. Almost all my savings went there. Tuko family, welcome to today's episode of Tuko Talks. My name is Yvonne Kawira. Now today we are having a very interesting guest. Do you ever imagine what happens when someone is about to pass on? What happens when you experience that near-death experience? Do you see things? Do you hear things? Do you talk to people? Do you see the light? Well, Today we are here with a guest who has experienced all of that and she's here to share that experience with us. So stay tuned because you're about to learn a whole lot about near-death experiences. Hari Musana, Rose, to the show. Asante. Rose, uh, thank you so much for reaching out. Na Suriako is very, very interesting. Yeah. Very yes. inspiring. Yes. Ume ngangana sana, ume chapa kazi sana, yeah. ume struggle. Yeah. But you're here to share your journey. Where uh, did you grow up? I'm from Meru County. Um, I'm a rust born. Uh, I'm from a polygamous family. And um, I love God. I love people. Growing up, I was a happy girl, very ambitious. I wanted to do so many things. Uh, I wanted to achieve many things in life. And so I went to school in Meru mm. until uh, the whole level. And then when I came to, to Nairobi, I joined a college, that is Kenya Utadi College. I did some courses there uh, in Utadi. Uh, later on, I met a Ribalu up in Nepali, been an MPSA agent. I met a few cousins in Dogundoga, but I've never been employed there in the Kazi. So I can see that. Um, so, I decided to go to Qatar yeah. for Green Apache mm -hmm. uh, 2021 uh, and I went to Qatar through an agency. I cannot complain about Qatar, mm -hmm. the job, the pay and everything because uh, Qatar is a very good country. Um, when they, did you go? I, I went in January, I think January 2021 okay. and then I came uh, February 2023. The reason you came back is because your contract expired. My, my contract expired. Mm -hmm. And I had to come here now maybe to renew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, me, I didn't want to go back mm -hmm. because I love to stay in Kenya. Because um, for me, when I went to Qatar, um, I, after, after a few months, I became anemic mm -hmm. because I'm very sure when it comes to food. I, I wanted the, the food from, from you know, Mm -hmm. I could not find those food and they're, they're quite expensive. So mm -hmm. I became anemic and I spent quite some money to, to, to get me at my feet. Mm -hmm. um, but in Qatar. Okay. What job were you doing there? Yeah? What job were you doing there? I'm a hotelier. You are so I was, a, I was a waitress at a hotel mm -hmm. in Qatar. Okay. Yeah. So after your contract expired, you definitely came back to Kenya? Yes. Had you saved some money? Yeah. What was your plan? And mm -hmm. saved a very good amount of money. Uh, I wanted to build some houses for maybe for Zaku mm -hmm. uh in Meru. Mm -hmm. So when uh, when I was still in Katal, I sent uh, someone um, some money to buy me a land, of which he didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came and I started to uh, to to you know to do the building and everything because I, I wanted to build some few houses and then have some little money, mm -hmm. uh, I start a business and then stay in Kenya because I felt this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. um, the building started and everything was going well. Yeah. Um, but when they were about to now to, they were about now to put the roof, uh, I was told that house was not built properly. I was told it is, it is not straight. Mm -hmm. So I was told I have to demolish it and start it afresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it couldn't fall. So I had to do that because, because it is long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my house was demolished. I had spent a lot of money mm -hmm. to build this house. Uh, almost all my savings went there. So I felt banned. Like any other person, if you mm -hmm. lose, you know, it's a business. I felt banned because I, I was saving a lot towards that. Uh, towards that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but for me, you know me, I, I, I don't, 
I'm very strong. I felt I was very strong at that moment. Mm -hmm. That did not affect me that much. So before the house was demolished, as I was now building it, yeah. there is a lady. Um, she's from my home area and she lives in UK. She has been in UK for maybe 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I had spoken to her and asked her to find me a job. Mm -hmm. That is before I went to Qatar. So she told me she didn't have an opportunity at that moment, but if she gets something, she'll tell me. So she called me on April 18th, that I remember, mm -hmm. and she told me there is an opening, there is a new company that is starting for caregiving, mm -hmm. and they named workers. And I was very happy because when she told me about the job and the pay and everything, ah, even though I decided to stay in Kenya now, I changed my mind and I yeah. said, ah, I'm going now to, to UK. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was uh, now doing the preparation is when now the house was demolished. So it did not eat me that much because I was like, ah, where do I'm going? So I'm going. I said, ah, it's like Nimambo ya Mungu. Mm -hmm. Since I'm going to UK, no problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe in three months, four months, I'll be able to, you know, to have my money back. Mm -hmm. You are Salah. Mm -hmm. So now I continued. It's like now this going to UK, ilifanya nika siku vunjika moyo sana, mm -hmm. nika sema, ah, yu imepotea hivi, but then, nimepata opportunity mm -hmm. ingine. Mm -hmm. So, nika endelea, nika tafuta kila kitu, I even did the health the, mm -hmm. with the British Council, mm -hmm. that is to, to, to show maybe you can be able to communicate in English, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I even did that, and other documents that I was told to look for. Mm -hmm. So, now, the lady told me, you know, those, those companies in UK, they don't do one interview. Uh, they, they can do multiple interviews. Yes. So the lady told me um, the first interview will be on August. And by then, mm -hmm. I should have everything. And we did the first interview on uh, August with the panelists, and there were like five people. Uh, they, they, they were happy. They said that we like the way you are talking. We believe that you are a good person, and that's what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. So they said uh, they think I have uh, high chances. And now the lady, uh, the lady now from my home area is like she guaranteed me what I mm -hmm. uh, I was there in the office with them uh, as they view your 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 CV, and they didn't really like you. So me, I was hundred percent sure what I chukua. Yeah. Uh, so the next interview was to be on uh, September. And uh, yes, it, they called me on that September. Mm -hmm. The lady called me first. She told me that the the, the interview is uh, scheduled for the next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it was on Thursday, on 14th of September, and she told me they are going to send me the link so that I can mm -hmm. I can choose the date I want for the interview. So I didn't choose on 18th. 18th was on a Monday, mm -hmm. and now now that was on Thursday. I choose the interview on Monday. Mm -hmm. Hey, so that day, my my nephew was sick, but I didn't know. She woke up, he woke up. We, we don't live together because it's, it's a boy, so he has a house somewhere. Mm -hmm. So me, I heard that he is sick. For me, I did not take it seriously because uh, I know, ah, you name Levi. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the name was Mwiti. I'm a very cool. See, I took a semas. Well, not your stories of Shago. Sema, ah, maybe Kupatagari, Nininini, took a sema to tend a common the following day. A capelic mm -hmm. were public hospital, now Vijana Wengine. Mm -hmm. So the following day to the Mukia study at Yalikufa. Wow. I couldn't believe it. It's like when you lose someone unexpected, someone a kufe to Unaskanga and Kama Kunaki to Ungefanya. So interview. Uh, the lady in UK told me, be very discreet with the information you give these people because those interviews are recorded. Mm -hmm. The previous interview, I told them that I wanted my first priority. I want to see my nephew back to his feet because uh, he, he drinks a lot and abuse. Mm -hmm. So may I want to take uh, with him, me with him in UK, mm -hmm. a quick treating. Mm -hmm. Now I have to tell them this story, but then you will be unfortunately the boy is gone. We are going to, to communicate through the email. The barrier now was on 25th. Now, that is 18th when I'm having the interview. Yes. The barrier is on 25th. We, we did the barrier 
we send him off well and uh, now i came back home tukaka tukaka so reality kanza ku eat nikafikiria kwani watu waniongeleshi they and send they will talk me uh, one minute wait, one week mm -hmm. so i called the lady in the uk and i told her why are they not communicating hata iko imekaa sana ni ile stress yeah. so nilimsumbua sana mpanka last year kaniambia ah oh, let me talk to them akaongea na wao akamwambia we are going to send her the, the message the the email today they sent me an email i think it was on that year mm -hmm. and the they, they sent unfortunately lose we cannot take you so kulus hizi vitu zote hizi mbili na unajua pia sasa the house yeah. pia ni lose mm -hmm. so hizi vitu zote ziko kwa akili unajua when nilia, ni, ile kitu najua na ningependa watu wajue ukikuwa na depression depression inaweza anzia hata ukua mtoi kuna kitu unaambiangwa inakundi unakuwa depressed mm -hmm. but aujui ina inakuwa hapo kitu kingine inakuwa yeah. zika pile yeah zika pile although mimi nilikuwa naona kama hizo si vitu hizi kupoteza hao na kupoteza job ungeniuliza nilikuwa nakwambia ah hiyo si kitu mimi kama my nephew anaweza rudishwa i don't care about this lakini remember zimeni mm -hmm. niko pale sasa ni kulala kuamka hata kukula siku mm -hmm. nikakonda kabisa bando niko mkonde lakini nika nikazindi kukonda nikakuwa silali so i started using the sleeping pills ai nikazinunua kwa chemistry around home mm -hmm. ai banka huyu mtu akaniambia hapana ah you need to see the doctor now i cannot sell them to you again so i started going far from home naenda nanunua because stalala if i don't take them and then zikakuwa zimezoea mwili nikakuwa hata nikizichukua sitalala mm -hmm. so and you know sasa home kila mtu si kila mtu pia ame lose ame lose ule ule kijana mm -hmm. si ati ni mimi peke yangu lakini although mimi ndiye nilikuwa affected juu tulikuwa close tulikuwa almost intimate mm -hmm. so hai ikakuwa sasa maisha ni ngumu hakuna kulala nikienda kulala nafikiria story ya huyu huyu kijana mala nakumbuka hakuna kwenda uk ilikuwa ni kama ilikuwa kwa mind mm. lazima niende ai tena nikikumbuka hakuna building sana ona what what did i go to kata to do what are even people even in the locality wanasema aje huyu alikujanga alitoka kata akaingia kwa nyumba akajifungia mm. so nikaangalia mamangu ni mzee niliona ile kifo ya ule mtu kwa sababu yeye ndiye aligrow na from akiwa 3 years mm. alileta ule mtu mtu yeye akiwa 3 years na alikuwa anampenda sana cuz ni nephew wake alikuwa anampenda sana walikuwa na juke sasa niliona amekuwa ame affected ni vile ni mzazi so nikaona nikijiua huyu sasa atakuwaaje so nilipanga kujiua kutoka november but sasa nilikuwa naangalia hakuna mtu mwingine nilikuwa nahurumia ni madhe mm -hmm. na uza sasa huyu mama atakuwaaje nasema mimi siku moja ni kunywe ndawa nilale wakiamka wasinipate sasa naona eh umama na kona high blood pressure kwa sababu na mashuka unajua watu wazee nikaona hapana nikafanya hivyo niko na best yangu anaishi embu nikampigia simu akamwambia mimi nataka kutembea akaniambia sawa nikaenda huyo demu akona mtoto mmoja ako single lakini akona mtoto nikaenda kwa huyo demu nikakaa akakuwa sasa nitalala kwa kiti juu ana nyumba kubwa ni one bedroom so mimi najua nilikuwa naenda kujiua kwake jumi staki kujiua kwa um kwa mam hapa karibu na mam nilikuwa najua hata nilikuwa nasema huyu acha tu atasikia story he kwenda kule dem tukakaa ni nini ni, ya kujua kujua kama niko na stress ama ama niko na hizi mambo mm. so ikafika usiku nilikuwa nimeenda nikanunua dawa za so ndio nikakunywa hiyo dawa nikalala huyu dem ako kwa rumu yake so sijui kama alikuwa napeleka sasa ni story sasa ananipeanga yeah aliniambia alinipata nimeanguka kwa unajua hii sasa kitu kama ile umelala kaniambia nimepata ume, umeamka umeanguka na uko na mate huku mingi na hata breathe so udema akaita huba ndio wakanipeleka wakanipeleka hosi so kunipeleka hosi sasa hii ni story ananipea kunipeleka hosi sasa madaktari pale wananiangalia wana unajua vile nurses wanakuchukua mm -hmm. na kagali nini nini so basi nikuwa pale kwa kitanda ya kutritiwa it's now when i got out of my body nilisikia sasa ile nilikuwa wanaona hata si respond wanajaribu kunitreat si respond ndio mimi nilitoka out of my body 
and I saw myself rooting through the ceiling. Mwisho ni kajiona ni kwa juu mali. Sijui ni wapi lakini si kwa, si kwa nyumba. Ni kaona ni kwa mali. And I'm looking down. I could see my body lying on the bed. And I could feel this is me. And I was like, what is happening? Could you hear what these people around you, like the nurses, are talking about? The, I, could he, I, I couldn't hear them talk. I couldn't hear, see them. I could see Welcome. their actions. Mm -hmm. They are talking on each other and everything. And trying very hard to revive me. I could see all that. Mm -hmm. And I could wonder, what am I? Now I don't remember what happened. I took the drugs and what. Mm -hmm. But I could see now my body lying there. And I'm very conscious now. I could feel, um, I could feel myself. And I could feel myself. Nikosaina jielewa. Nauliza what, what is my body doing there? And I'm here. And now I was in that state of confusion. Mm -hmm. I felt a presence of someone and I looked around. I could not see anyone. Was there light or darkness where? It was, it was light. It was like the way now during the day. Mm -hmm. Because I could see clearly. And remember now it is at night. Mm -hmm. But me I could see very clearly. But I could only see my body. And those people working on me, the nurses, that area. Mm -hmm. That power spoke to me through the mind and said, please come, come this way. He pointed, and he pointed through the mind, I can understand. It's like someone is talking to you through the mind. Na unailewa, kama mtu blind venye, unaunanga anailewa vitu. Aujui anailewa, hii njia iko hivi na hivi. Me, he spoke to me through the mind and said, please come this way. I turn around and I saw a turn, a very light turn. Ikona stars. Uko yani iko, kama vile unaona, hizi lightings, iko na stars uko, iko very light, mini kati, akaniambia, walk through that tunnel. And I walked through that tunnel, but that time I was alone. Mm -hmm. When I got at the end of the tunnel, I, I felt now a pleasant, that pleasant again. Mm -hmm. And he said, please walk with me. And he took me through the garden that was very green, everything was growing, the smelling very good. And I asked him, I asked, what am I doing here? Where am I? And he said, you're in heaven. He said, what? He said, yes, you're trying to come here, but it is not your time. I said, what? And I said, when, before you're born, you sign a contract. When, in that contract, there are things that you're told you're going to do on that contract, mm -hmm. here on earth, and everything is predestined. Uh, in, in short, I can say everything is predestined. Mm -hmm. The way is, he told me, and I, interpre I interpreted it myself, mm -hmm. everything is uh, predestined. When you see yourself here, your career, mm -hmm. you're interviewing people, it is not by chance, or the, uh, the hard work, or the smartness, or anything. No. Yes, the hard work is there, but it is predestined. God knew you'll be here talking to us. Mm -hmm. um, that was your purpose, and you now you're, you're serving your purpose. And God is happy when you're mm -hmm. serving your purpose. So he told me, you signed all those things and your, de your death date is not yet. And you cannot come here. And I said, now I will, I will. when I came now, when I, I, be, now I came back to, the, to, to, to life, yeah. I, it's now when I understood death is no, it's predestined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so while you were there, did you I ask there, questions? Yeah. I asked him questions. I asked him, uh, I wanted to take my life because my I wanted to see my nephew. Yeah. And I I feel I cannot live without him and all other things that are happening in my life. I am tired. He said, your nephew is in a good place. And uh, he, he finished his contract. That's why he came. For you, you have to finish your contract. I said, can I see him? He said, yes. And uh, he pointed, and I turned, and I saw my, my nephew. Mm -hmm. But I did not see my nephew with the same look he, he had when he died. I saw him with a younger look, like a teenager or early 20s. So when he died, how old was he? He was uh, 34. 34? Yes. And this time you're seeing him in that space. How uh, old? He was like uh, maybe 18 to 22 up. Mm. You look young, you are, you are a young age. man. Yeah, a young man without beard because he had beards mm. that time. So he was, but we recognize. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we grew up together. I saw him and I smiled. I smiled back, and he's, he also spoke to me through the mind, not talking like we are talking, mm -hmm. and he said I'm okay. And uh, I tried to go to to reach him, maybe to hug him. 
but I couldn't. I could feel I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, but I could not reach. And the energy told me, that energy told me, you cannot cross over. Yes, in, in the other, uh, he has crossed over. You are still, you're not dead. You cannot cross over. You cannot speak with you. You cannot go hug him or touch him. It means now you'll be dead. And it is not yet your time. For me, I was willing to go and hug him and die and be at peace. Be with him and be at peace. But I was told it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And now this power was like, I want to stay here. But he said, it is time. It is your time to go back. And please go back and preach love. He sent to me, he sent uh, something like, it is love that God wants you to love each other. Through love, now how I interpreted it, he said, through love, um, if I love you and I love other person, then I wouldn't do something bad to them and God is happy. I wouldn't, like, uh, there is a lot of corruption in this country. If you, someone loves you, they will not, awata kuwa collapsed, wafanye corruption, mulipange madeni mingi, ama mfanye vitu, mtu mwingine asave, you can imagine. You steal money from people, you put in your pocket, and there are people who are nalalanja. And you're there, you're going to church, you're saying, we umeokoka. Uh, it is not church. Even religion, alitach hapo kidogo. It is not church, or religion, or anything will take you to heaven. Only love. He said, God is very happy with your, with your nephew. He was a drunkard. He was not going to church. But he did so many things to touch people's lives. And I was like, what? So when I came back to life, I realized that this boy, you know, he was like, he wanted to stay kwa stage. Pale akieka watu. Si conductor, taut, akieka watu. Because he wanted fast money. Najwa pale akieka mtu, anapewa 50, anapewa 20, nini nini. Sasa adikuwa naka pale. This boy used to carry luggages for, especially the old people. Sana. Yani, for free, not for money. Shoshua kie kwa hapo, anachukua, anambebea. I could see him. Ni kwa sababu kwetu ni hapo, I could see him. And I saw him maybe two weeks before he died, helping Shoshua. And I was very happy. I was touched. I was like, I'm about to... Yani ni mtuwe kwa hiyo stage. Mwachikuwa naona, he is good. I can see he is a good person without forcing it. Yeah. Even the old people, when he died, one Shoshu came home and said, why did God not take me and take this boy? And he told my mother, this boy, whenever he used to go to stage, he would, before I crossed the road, because now I'm, I'm old, I cannot see properly, he could come and take me. And Nanda and Shikamkono, and Taftia Galinsu. So he was like, why did God take him? So also for me, I felt very bad because whenever I needed me, whenever I needed him, even when I was in Qatar, I could call and say, tell me to go buy medicine for my mom or do something for my mom. And he could do that without even questioning. It was very good even to people around. People can testify even those who can watch. He was even sent. Ni kukunyo watu na yaki kunyo hata piga kelele. Hakuwa na. Ie kila mtu kwa kia likuwa lafiki. Hakuwa anasema wimi adui wangu ama uyu. Hakuwa na issues. Na likuwa na pena sana kusaindia. Na nguvu yake. So he said God was very happy. Mpe mia akakule. Iyo kitu ataka anakumbuka. Anasema ule mschana. Now that's what God does. Iyo ndio inafa, that's your way to heaven. Iyo ndio mungu anapenda. Not because you're very beautiful or you're very rich, but you don't touch lives. Kukutouch life, ya mtu si lazima ufanya vitu bigi. Ni ila kitupia we una, you know there are those things people have done to you and you remember them up to now. There are those things you don't forget. So those are things that, that's what God wants us to live. How did you go back? To your body did he send you back did you feel when you were going back to your body when immediately he told me go preach love yeah. and he told me a couple of things that i was saying that uh, yes. my my about my nephew yes. 
he told me now it is your time to go back. When it is your time, you will come. But now you have to go back to the, to, to the you, you still have other things, the, the purposes, you still have things that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He told me now you have to go. And immediately I was now starting to complain. No, oh, um, immediately I saw myself in another tunnel that was dark and it was going very fast, very fast. And uh, all of a sudden I opened my eyes and I was, I was like looking where am I? And I could see my friend could come quickly to see me. The doctors are like, wow, she, she's back. She's back. And uh, uh, that story, it is not a dream. You know, a lot of people think um, a near-death experience is a dream. No, I, mean, I dream a lot. But this, is, this was not a dream. Because the nurses told me, we, we never thought you'd be back. With the, those kind of doses you took, we never expected you to because when you are in a peleka hosi la fikiyangu ali okota iso ma ma vitu when you are on a mimi ni unresponsive na kaona e kuna kitu imefanya kimo mtu ali chukua zile ma 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 kalata sizanda wa akainda na zofia pa na wewe atukua tuna tuna ku expect we we did a lot so me what what I wanted to tell people or what I would want people to know is that first. You know, people have been dying a lot. And I know there are people who are devastated, like mm -hmm. I was. Uh, losing a loved one is not something easy. But unfortunately, we have to go through that mm -hmm. process. At, at a certain moment, someone has to lose somebody in their lives, and uh, life must go on. Um, because as uh, you had, you cannot die before, before your time. You at a, at a, even if you try to take your life, and it is not your time, God will bring you back. Death. You don't die because you have an accident. You don't die because you make a mgonjwa. No, death is spiritual. It's something that God to alikuwa mepanga. Uyu atakufa ivi na ivi. Now, by the way, when before you come, wu unajuanga. But when you come to the world, uh, conscious yako inapotea. Unakani kama mtutua kona kitu kama demeji. Unapotea, una, unasahau. God anakufanya unasahau. Why? Because now I went... Uh, deep into the Bible and I went deep into the articles, deep in so many things. God anataka usahau because an, kama kwa hii life alikuwa anataka, alikuwa meona wei ni mtu greedy. Uh, kama politician. Sisemi ni politician wote. Yeah. Una kuna mtu greedy, anapewa kitu lakini atosheki. Bando anaendelea kufanya vitu mbaya. Kama ni pesa anaendelea kuiba. Na kuposition anapata pesa inamtosha. So God akaona we uko na greed for example kwa hii lifetime we ukikaa bando unaendelea na greed God auta utakuja tena atakufanyia test ya greed tena akuweke mahali aone what are you doing are you learning but then if God akikuonyesha lifetime yako we uko na una, una aupendi watu ulikuwa na lo chafu ulikuwa hivi mm -hmm. and that's why I'm you going back to the to have again mm. wewe si utajua sasa oh kumbe ngoda ni ndio test utajua test yako ni gani mm. kwa hivyo utakuja utaendelea na ile studi ya uchuki ya nini mm. uh, kila mtu ako na nini for zake like yeah. contact yako iko the same na yangu ama ya mtu mwingine ngoda anakuleta na purpose fulani anasema sasa kawira atakuwa host walikuwa najua hii kitu itakuwa tuko itakuwa utakuwa hapo kuna vitu zingine pia kwa life yako yenye sijui alikuwa najua wewe utapitia but everything what i would want to tell people everything is predestined hata ukipoteza mtu ndio you must grieve because okay. it's the family yeah because you have a body physical body lazima usikie vibaya mm -hmm. but what you need to know that ujalusu huyo mtu he is still there waiting for you and uh, when it is your time you just meet with him or her. So what, because I know there are many people who are going that at this moment, when they are dead, yeah, what one hour, it is God's plan. It is not that at the, I was going to I was going to BNB, it is because God wanted that person to die that way. And the death, I was told, it is a, it is because of karma, past karma what you did in your previous life. Kama wewe ulikuwa na 
uliua mtu in your previous life god anaweza kuweka u, uawe kama ma, like my nephew alikuwa ni, ni kama alikuwa ni great and hiyo day maybe alikuwa ni great mtu kwa life ingine mtu mwenye alikuwa anakufa ama mwenye alikuwa anataka yani that's how i interpreted so many things after kuu zile vitu niliambiwa na vile venye niliona niliona everything is predestined yeah what is the main reason why you wanted to share this story kuna message gani ungependa ku reach out to kenyans nayo um, mimi ningependa ku reach out watu mm-hmm. kwen kali sana watu wenye wamepoteza watu mm-hmm. wajue hii kitu imepangwa kwa hiyo yani ukijua ni Mungu amepanga hii kitu si shetani i'm telling you even if mtu sahii akuroge mm-hmm. and god don't want you dead you not die mm-hmm. something will come uta uta reviveiwa mm-hmm. but even if now i poison your food now and you die mm-hmm. it is because god wanted you to die that way mimi nitaenda kujibu mm-hmm. why did you kill her but god knew si god me i want people to go back to, to wajue god knows everything mm-hmm. knows our today tomorrow and the other day mm-hmm. so if if, if that the case it means that he knew you are going to die if it is my nephew he knew you will die that day if it is a uh, like we didn't go like as a family to see him it is like negligence see them mm-hmm. god did not neglect him so if he died he's callous it is god work and it was decided before eternity mm-hmm. god knew that boy would die that day and you, you cannot die before your time or you cannot die you cannot succeed in it even a minute uh, the way it is written mm-hmm. your death is written it's like a contract the way you're working with tuko mm-hmm. the you have a contract work contract that you signed with them mm-hmm. it's the same way life it's a contract so right now what is your plan with life what has uh, been your future plan going forward knowing all these things that you know now now i'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit relieved mm-hmm. it's not because of our strength there is nothing we can do even if i i went to the hospital there is no, i couldn't have changed the, the, that mm-hmm. so it uh, made me feel like uh, it is okay mm-hmm. he's gone but it was meant to go that way even if alikufa at the height and nilikuwa naona i am very near to help him it is god god knew you he is not going to travel to uk and maybe also god knew i am not going to travel and he knew now this something will come to have my mind distracted so that that will not that thing will not happen so for me now i don't have many plans mm-hmm. because for first i don't have a job and um i'm still you know there is that money ahead mm-hmm. because i was told i would pay for my visa for my flight mm-hmm. so i am i earn some money i'm still um there is nothing much i'm doing because still my mind is not um, settled mm-hmm. and when i look at the little money i have you know now kenya is very hard mm-hmm. if you it is very hard to especially the business is very hard very 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 hard mm-hmm. so in future inshallah i'm hoping to help my purpose now is to help 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 mm-hmm. i i don't have uh, i'm i'm single and i don't have a uh, children i don't intend to have children or uh, to get married what i want is to impact other people's life umesema umesha history yako ili kusaidia watu wenye wana struggle na different things depression yeah. grieving mm-hmm. all of that mm-hmm. how can people reach you because you've said you want to serve and help and show love can people reach you on you you can reach me if you're going through grief and you want someone to talk to um you can reach me through um, my number that is 0725918592 um also i have an email address it, it is rosegatweri losegatweri76 @gmail.com okay. and i have another one at fansize kenya at @gmail.com yes i did not uh, name that i i sing i tried to do music Okay. before kitambo mm-hmm. uh, it did not work with really well but i still love the passion and i still recon mm-hmm. uh, after some time i i still recon because it's something that i love mm-hmm. um yes but you know how kenya is the music industry is called everything in kenya is like corrupt mm-hmm. so 
yeah me i mean i want to inspire people yeah. and um anyone who would have maybe a job mm -hmm. not not an ipatia pesa mm -hmm. no uh anyone would have a job that uh, thinks that i can we can work we can do i would i would love to be in kenya right. not to travel abroad if i can get uh, maybe an opportunity to work maybe kwa easy kama ku cancel watu watu wako na depression ama kazi yoyote kwanza ya kuongea you can mnaweza sikia naongea sana <laughs> so <laughs> if anyone can have any opportunity i would appreciate it yeah. but hata kama una opportunity you going through depression you can reach me I, i will inspire you because already i know everything i have been through a lot yeah. yeah i can inspire you rose i am very very blessed to have such next to you today to learn all that stuff that you had to share mm. and through your experience i have actually learned a lot and i am grateful that you chose to use your pain your challenges all these things that you have gone through to use them as a platform to help other people mm. some people suffer and choose to remain in that you know bracket that cocoon mm. but you've chosen to use this challenge yeah. and inspire people yes. and help people out there to see things in a different way yeah. and for that i am grateful to co family that has been quite their story we have learned a lot if you wish to reach out to rose please call her on the number that she has shared we will pin it on the pinned comment please reach out to her love her please let her encourage you and thank you so much for staying with us till the end of the show my name is Yvonne Kaire till next time keep it cool